Yes, good afternoon, my lord. Proceed. Good afternoon. My lord, I will proceed on the substantive questions as my colleague, Mr. Yeah. Harvey, has laid out the basis. Mm -hmm. And I want to address you in this manner. The first question mm -hmm. that must be answered is, what is the law relating to the issue of joinder? And then secondly, what are the facts and arising out of that question is have the respondents brought themselves within the law or showed how it applies to them? And my Lord, Yes, proceed. I wish to state from the onset that having looked at all the authorities referred by the intend intended respondents, that's the DPP and the DCI, in all the authorities they have cited, Joinder was denied. This therefore, starting by what Mr. Charles Kanjama said, is that a wide latitude should be given to the respondents, intended respondents, because it's a constitutional matter and so on and so forth. My Lord, in addressing that question, this is what the Court of Appeal stated in the case of the late Justice Moijo Mataya Olekewa versus Chief Justice of Kenya and six others. It's 2008 EKLR, mm -hmm. and we have produced it in our list and bundle of authorities. Mm -hmm. And my Lord, it was the court's holding mm -hmm. in addressing a similar application for joinder by mm -hmm. parties who are not in the proceedings. The court ruled yes. that while the constitution and mm. public policy demanded that a mm. person should not be condemned unheard, mm. there is another equally important issue of mm. public policy mm. that there be an orderly dispensation of justice. Mm. And the Court of Appeal said it is the duty of the court Mm. to balance the conflicting issues. My Lord, therefore, the overarching principles mm. that will weave through the submissions that I make is, number mm. one, there must be mm. order. Mm. And number two, joinder is not allowed as a matter of course. 
And therefore, it is no wonder that in the authorities mm -hmm. cited by the DPP and the DCI, mm -hmm. Joinder was denied. That will also lead me to the second ground on which I will address you, which is that the intention or the motive of the DPP and the DCI within these proceedings is not to further the cause of justice, but rather to vex the petitioner and to scandalize the court and the administration of justice. Their participation, my lord, will when weighed with other considerations lead to the embarrassment of the court and not to the furtherance of justice. Now, my lord, starting with what the courts have already ordered and decided, my first point now, whether the DPP and the DCI have made out a case to be joined to these proceedings. As the petitioners, as sorry, as respondents. I want to refer to the authority cited by the DCI, the fourth, the fifth intended respondent. This is Communications Commission of Kenya and four others versus Royal Media Services Limited and seven others. It is their own authority. Mm -hmm. And we want to ask whether they themselves have shown that they have brought themselves within the provisions of that authority. My Lord, and at paragraph 23 of that decision, the Supreme Court, considering an application for joiner, cited um, the case of Meme versus Republic. This is 2004, One East Africa, on page 124. The court stated mm. that a party should be join, enjoined in a matter for the reasons that mm. one, joinder mm. of a person because of his presence mm. will result in the complete settlement of all the mm. questions involved in the mm. proceedings. And I wish to pause at this particular point that has been emphasized in the submissions of the fifth respondent to ask what is the issue that they claim is to be settled by their participation. My Lord, the, the DPP and the DCI do not show
that question that necessitates their presence. They have claimed, yes, to be involved or to be touched in one way or another. But they do not show the question that will be answered by their participation. Now, this, my lord, was Mr. Muteti in his submissions betrayed the fourth and the the intended fourth and fifth respondents. Yes. And he said, even though petition 245 is couched mm -hmm. in a manner mm -hmm. that it only deals with mm -hmm. the question mm -hmm. of the recusal mm -hmm. of the second and third respondents. Mm -hmm. There are other wider mm. issues, those were his words, that need mm. to be addressed. Mm. So that, my Lord, from that submission, mm. the fourth and the fifth intended respondents mm. Intend to bring into the proceedings mm. what they think mm. should be addressed. They are not satisfied with the questions mm. that the petitioner has put before the court and limited herself to. They have their own agenda they, and they want to muddy the waters by bringing their own mm. issues. And that goes also to the question of vexation and abuse of process. The respondents needed to show what the issue mm. is mm. that requires their participation and how it affects them. The second point. Just, just a moment. I, 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 I'm sorry, I realized I was going too yeah. fast. Yeah, participation. You are saying that requires their participation, and and which affects them. I think that is what I said. Yes, and which affects them. We are still recording these proceedings using pen and paper. <laughs> What is digital is the e-filing. Everything else is where we were. <laughs> so let us move slowly. I I I am guided. I understand. <laughs> Proceed. The second reason, my lord, that the Supreme yes. Court gave was mm -hmm. that to be enjoined. A person must show that joinder is to provide for, to provide protection for the rights of a party who would otherwise be adversely affected in law. And the third point, so that I take them together, 
-hmm. is that the joinder is necessary to prevent mm -hmm. a likely cause of proliferated mm -hmm. litigation. And out of the three, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Out of the three, out of the three questions, the Supreme Court asked itself the following questions: What is the intended interested party's stake and relevance in the proceedings? Mm. And B. Will the intended interested party suffer any prejudice? if denied joinder. And after looking at the history of the matter, one of the things that the Supreme Court was careful also to warn itself about and I would ask the court to also be mindful of the same and a consideration and adopt the same approach was what it stated in paragraph 27 which is this yes. we cannot exercise our discretion mm. to enjoin a party mm. that disguises itself as an interested party mm. while in actual fact merely mm. seeking to institute fresh mm. proceedings mm. Mm. a fresh cause sorry the word used is a fresh cause and so my lord i go back mm. to mr mutetti's submission and admission mm. that the issues before the court right now do yes. not involve mm. the fourth and the fifth intended respondents mm. they are seeking to bring in a fresh cause mm. in order to justify their participation in these mm -hmm. proceedings. There is no cause against them. We are categorical mm -hmm. that no prayers have been made or sought mm -hmm. against the fourth and the fifth intended respondents. My Lord, mm. the, in trying to show that there are orders or claiming or purporting mm. that there are orders sought against mm. the fourth and the fifth intended respondents. Mm. Mr. Tybe argues mm. and says that mm. prayer H, mm. prayer mm. I, mm. and prayer L mm. of the petition mm. are directed against the fourth and the fifth intended respondents. Now, my lord, my colleague, Mr. Harvey, mm -hmm. took the court mm -hmm. in summary through the genesis mm -hmm. and the facts that have led to this petition
and it is clear from the facts without going into the merit of the petition that what the petitioner complains about are the actions of the jersey as the administrative body that are supposed to be hearing the petitions against her. Mm. In the carrying out of its functions, Proceed. Yes, my lord. My lord, the petitioner is complaining that there are decisions taken by the administrative tribunal or body mm. that are not correct. In such an instance, my lord, yes. it is not the yes. facts that form the decision that matter, but whether the tribunal itself was right. And in such an instance, the litigant before the JSC cannot be heard to come and justify or attempt to respond to answers that can only and that be answered by the JSC. Prayer H, which you referred to, my Lord, just so that we do not leave it open to speculation, is this. That a declaration be and is hereby mm. issued that the director mm. of public prosecutions and the director of criminal investigations are not any person mm. entitled to petition mm. the first respondent, mm. the JSC, mm. to initiate the removal of the petitioner from office of judge mm. under Article 168 of the Constitution mm. of Kenya. Mm. My Lord, mm. that question mm. can only be answered by the JSC who made the decision To allow you, you are now breaking up council. I don't know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you hear I, me? Now? I don't seem to get very. Uh, yeah, I don't see you. I just breaking, but uh, let's try and see how far we can go. I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me Proceed. any better now? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, That's my lord. Nice. At what point did you lose me? I'm saying it's okay. That question can only be answered by the JSC. Yes, that question can only be answered by the JSC. Who made yes. the decision? It is the JSC who made the decision that the DPP and the DCI yes. are proper parties before them. In other words, my lord, yes. there is a distinction between the merit of the petitions brought by the DCI and the DPP before the JSC, which for the avoidance of doubt is not being questioned in this, this is 245 of 2020. We're not questioning those petitions mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. What is questioned is whether the JSC was right mm -hmm. to admit those petitions before it. in the first place, as the person who is required to make a decision as to who is the right person to appear before the JSC. And my Lord... And my Lord, it is, it is actually then that ties in with the rationale behind Rule 5D 1 and 2 as to who this is of the Mutunga rules. As to who can decide which party to enjoin to proceedings. Or whose presence is necessary to the proceedings. Which is... Uh, I think you are now, you are now completely breaking up and... Uh... We, we are no longer together. Well, I, sorry, my, my Lord, I don't know what is going on. We have done nothing different. At maybe, what point? Can you hear me? Maybe, maybe you need to invite your IT experts to see what is the problem on your end. Is, is it, my Lord, is it likely that it is actually the internet on the other side? that has a problem? Yeah. yeah. You are now clear. Okay. Proceed. That is okay. My Lord, at, at what point did you lose me? No, I've, I've got a new, but you are breaking up here. It's okay. all right. Let's okay. Proceed. My Lord, the question of joinder is decided by the party or by the court, the parties that are already before the court in proceedings, or by the court. The same rules apply even in civil proceedings. Am I still coming through clearly? Yes. Proceed. Under Order 1, Rule 3 of the Civil Procedure Rules, which we have made an attempt to draw parallels, yes.
all persons may be joined as defendants against whom any right to, to relief in respect of or arising out of the same act of transaction or series of acts or transactions is alleged to exist. And where if separate suits were brought against such persons, any, any common question of law or fact would arise. Yes. So that, my lord, if the question of a party before the JSC is challenged, it is not the party who comes to defend, but the person who made the decision who comes to defend. You were told that the other prayer that is sought, against the DPP and the DCI that warrants their joinder was prayer I. Yes. My Lord, that prayer reads as follows. A declaration B and is hereby issued that an independent constitutional office holder or state agency and or state officer cannot initiate the process for removal of a judge as doing so is inconsistent with and in violation of the tripartite framework and designation of sovereign power under Article 1.3 of the Constitution of Kenya. Mm. My Lord, it is trite that it is the JSC that has the mandate of sifting and sieving and deciding mm. matters or complaints or petitions that are brought before mm. it. Mm. It is for the JSC to determine mm. whether the threshold has been met mm. before a judge, mm. for instance, can be called to respond to a complaint mm against her or him. That is not a question for the parties. Mm. Mm. In this case, the litigant to decide mm. it is for the JC to justify mm its decision. And then finally, mm. it is said that prayer L mm. is against the DPP and the DCI. Mm. And this prayer just shows the dishonesty with which these proceedings are being pursued. Prayer L mm. says, requires, asks mm. the court to grant any other relief and mm. or orders the honor court mm. deems appropriate, just, and or fit to grant. Mm. My Lord, I am constrained to ask a rhetorical question. How does this apply to the DPP and the DCR?
surely it is to cast aspersions even against the court because this prayer can only be granted or deemed within the context of the proceedings and the prayers that are sought in the petition. My Lord, I am yes. hoping that we have con convinced you that there is no relief that has been shown mm. to be flowing or intended to flow to the intended respondents. Mm. And this position was affirmed in the case of Joseph Njau Kingori, also in our list of authorities, versus Robert Minor Chege and three others. Though a civil matter, my lord, the principles apply. Which year? Which year? Which year? Two, sorry, which year? I beg your pardon. 2002 EKLR. Yes. Where the court, my lord, stated that the guiding principles for joinder are as follows. The party must be a necessary party. Number two, he must be a proper party. Number three, in the case of a defendant, mm. there must be a relief flowing from that defendant to the plaintiff. And my Lord, on this, the GPP, the fourth intended, intended respondent, is categorical. Mm that they want to be enjoined as a respondent, not as an interested party. They have to show then that, and they have not done so, they have not shown what relief would flow from them to the plaintiff, in this case, to the petitioner. Number four, the court said that the ultimate order or decree cannot be enforced without his presence in the matter. That is, the intended party must show that, that the ultimate order or decree cannot be enforced without his presence in the matter. You have not been shown this. And then number five, the court said the intended party must also show that his presence is necessary to enable the court to effectively and completely adjudicate upon and settle all questions involved in the suit. And my Lord, our submission is that this court, without 
the fourth and the fifth intended respondents can easily and without any prejudice to any party resolve the issues that have been placed before it. Not the fanciful ones to be brought. The ones that are before the court can be addressed without the participation of the DPP and the DCI. My Lord. Yes. In the case of Talewa Road Contractors versus Kenya National Highways Authority and another, this is 2019 EKLR. It's also in our list and bundle of authorities. Mm. The court declined to enjoin the second, the intended second respondent mm. in the proceedings because that applicant had no claim or interest against the intended respondent. Repeat again. The court declined to enjoin the intended second respondent and stated that they cannot be joined as respondent in the proceedings because the applicant had no claim or interest or right against that intended second respondent. And in fact, Yes. My Lord, the court held that from the facts deposed by the intended second respondent, mm. it was clear it is the other way round that the intended second respondent mm. has a claim mm. against the applicant mm. to grant or allow joinder to these proceedings as respondent mm -hmm. would be a misjoinder. Mm -hmm. My Lord, the court in declining the joinder noted mm -hmm. that the ultimate order or decree in that case the arbitral award could be enforced without the intended second respondent as party to the instant proceedings The court noted that the intended second respondent's presence was not necessary to enable the court to effectively and completely adjudicate upon and settle all questions involved in the proceedings. Now, yes. to my final point, which I had stated at the beginning, the purpose for which the fourth and the fifth intended respondents seek to be joined to these proceedings
is not for the furtherance of the cause of justice, but to vex, to scandalize and embarrass the court and the petitioner. My Lord, it is a principle of law that where the ulterior motives or the extraneous purposes for which a litigation is pursued is shown to be the predominant factor the court would stay mm. those proceedings. In this case, my Lord, mm. it is our submission that the predominant mm. factor or motive mm. for which the fourth and the fifth inten um, interested, intended respondents seek to mm. be enjoined mm. is extraneous. to the cause of justice or the vindication of mm. any rights that they claim to have in these proceedings. And my Lord, I We want to connect the purposes as have been shown by all the respondents, including the first, second, and third respondents, and the intended respondents, in why they seek to pursue this matter. Mm. It should not be lost on the court, my lord and my senior, Mr. Paul Mwite, at the beginning of these proceedings, came and told the court mm. that this matter must be decided like yesterday. Because mm. of the question mm. of the Chief Justice's succession, mm. that is what matters to the JSC. And in making that statement, my Lord, the JSC gave away or betrayed itself and the ulterior motive. in these proceedings. Their interest 
is not the justice of this case. or to take the petitioner through a fair process, which is our main complaint against the JRC. There's is to address the succession politics or battle of the Chief Justice. This came from the JRC. I am I, I, not plucking this out of the air. It came from the JRC. And my lord, you were told that the public interest in the succession battle outweighs the petitioners fundamental rights and freedoms to a fair process. My Lord, may I place an objection on record? At no time did I see that the public interest how where is the petition applicant's interest? Let uh, my learned uh, sister not misquote me. I say public interest. Yes, I say public interest demands pity. But I didn't say that uh, rights, the rights of the deputy chief justice, my lord, are outweighed by the public interest. Don't misquote me. While we seek to place it squarely from the affidavit filed by the JSC. I will rephrase that and say, by that very argument, the implication yes. of Senior Counsel Mwite's submission is that the succession battle of the JSC is more important by implication than the petitioner's right this case is sought to be sacrificed at the altar or of a purported public interest that has got nothing to do with these proceedings. The individual rights of the petitioner which she has sought to vindicate are sought to be subordinated not just to any claim but to the succession battle of the Chief Justice. And I must say it is most unfortunate
Why is this important, my Lord? Mm. It is important for this reason. The jealousy against whom the petitioner is complaining about as an arbiter has unveiled themselves, disrobed themselves, and descended into the arena of the litigation to openly take sides with a litigant or litigants uh, 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 Council, I'll, I'll now have to stop you there because I don't know whether we are still on the application for joinder. Yes, my lord. We are now into the, into the issues, the substantive issues in the petition. My lord, we are still on the issue of joinder, and I, I am building I, I up. I that you wind up. Okay. I, I just, my lord, my. I am on that point and winding up, I was seeking to show why and draw the connection. My Lord, having shown yes. that Proceed. the having shown that the DPP and the DCI do not stand to suffer any prejudice yes. by their non-joinder. Nor have they demonstrated how they will suffer can you, can you can you start again? Are we shown that the DPP and the DCI do not stand to suffer any prejudice by their non-joinder? Yes. The question that the court must ask in the context of the proceedings is for what other reason would they seek to be enjoined and why is the arbiter against whom a complaint has been made would want them to be joined to the proceedings. Without coming out clearly. My Lord, Mr. Mwite, City Council Mwite, had argued that the JRC as an independent body does not want to be seen to be arguing the case of the DPP or the DCI. And yet, that is exactly what he did. And want to do. If they had wished 
to show impartiality. They should have kept quiet and not be involved in the matter. That nexus is what should be linked to the motive, the ulterior motive and the extraneous purpose that mm -hmm. I refer to. Mm. Mm. My Lord, just and to wind up my very last point is to refer to the decision of your brother, Justice Professor Nguge. In the case of Suri Oscar Kitchumba versus the Republic. This is criminal revision number 208 of 2020. The ruling delivered on the 18th of September, 2020. Mm. The ruling delivered on? 18th September, 2020. It's just a couple of days ago. Yes. My Lord, you have been referred several times to the wider public interest mm. and this is what the judge had to say and we ask you to be persuaded and guided by his reasoning which we submit is correct at paragraph 31 my lord against similar argument of public interest the judge said there is a second reason to worry about the acontextual and simplistic pitting of, in quotes, public order, peace, and security against the personal liberty, interests, and autonomy of the applicant. It is that logic espoused by this simplistic pitting is a dangerous anti-liberty ethos which was rejected mm -hmm. by the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Mm -hmm. He went ahead to cite his own decision in the case of Joseph Thiongo Joseph and 17 others versus Republic 2017 EKLR. Yes. And then at paragraph 32, he says, having reached here in my analysis, the result appears eminently tautological. No, I beg your pardon. Okay. I Proceed. Yes. The judge says, referring to the Thiongo case, I am obliged to observe that the pathway to peace and justice chosen by our constitution is one that assumes that aggrandizing personal autonomy and liberties, especially in the context of a criminal trial, is one that ensures our optimum aggregate, collective peace, security, and justice, more than the alternative path that limits individual liberties in order to safeguard these important values and outcomes. Ours is a, cons is a constitution that wisely assumes that peace, security, and justice can be achieved in the context of rule of law. For this to happen, each of the actors in the governance, law, order, and security sector 
must play their rightful role in ensuring sustainable peace, prosperity, and security. The judge was simply saying that the personal liberties and rights of a party cannot be sacrificed at the altar of alleged public good. And my Lord, just to conclude, because I had said we were looking for the averments made by the JSC in their response, I'm referring to paragraph 11 and of the first respondent's replying affidavit. Where the Honorable Anna Madi deposes, I am also aware that the JSC has taken cognizance of the fact that the current chairperson, namely the Chief Justice, is due for retirement in January 2021, and that the interim successor would be the petitioner, DCJ, who is the Deputy Chief Justice. The petitioner is also a member of the JSC and the Judiciary Ombudsperson dealing with complaints lodged against other judges and judicial officers. There would thus be a, a crisis of loss of confidence in the judiciary if the four petitions for removal of the DCJ against the petitioner, DCJ, are not urgently dealt with. And so there it is. That is the predominant interest of the first respondent against which their actions should be judged. My Lord, I urge you as I cede time to my colleague, Mr. Awele, to adopt the reasoning of the Court of Appeal in the case of Republic versus Chief Justice of Kenya and six others, ex parte, the late Justice Olekewa, 2010 EKLR, where the court, after deprecating the shenanigans and the tribulations against the judge, stated, we must state that generally people have believed in the righteousness and fairness of judicial process. We think we must reciprocate the trust and the confidence of the public by demonstrating a great sense of responsibility and integrity in the discharge of the mandate given. It is the applicant's case he deserves to be given that right, notwithstanding the fact that he is a judge and that he says that he is no different. Can we repeat again? I think my internet just went off. It, it, it must be indicating that you have said enough, uh, Ms. Soweto. It's my last and, sentence, uh, my Lord, I agree. Can I was... you start again then? Because my, my internet went off. My Lord, I refer you, it's... Start again. The, my Lord, I had referred you to the case of Republic versus Chief Justice of Kenya mm. and six others. Ex parte, mm. Moiko Matanya Olekewa, 2010 EKLR. Yes. My Lord, we have reproduced what the Court of Appeals said at paragraph 31 of our written submissions. This is at page 14. Yes. And the relevant 
paragraph is also highlighted and, and emphasized. My Lord, I refer to the paragraph that starts with, we must state that, so that I leave it at that. that judges are also yes. deserving of the same rights that are accorded to all other parties when they come before courts. I thank you, my Lord, for giving me the time.